So guys, this video is on F2, which is all about the intervention, the psychological intervention on performance profiling. Just for your reference, here is the specification content for F2, performance profiling. So what is performance profiling? Now we take part in an awful lot of different kinds of sports and those sports require different qualities in us. You know, some need us to, you know, have a lot of calmness in performance. Some need us to be very dynamic. Some require, put a lot of pressure on us. Some are a team, some are individual events. They all have different psychological qualities. And if we were assessing each of those sports, um, in terms of the components of fitness needed, we'd find that pretty easy. We'd need speed for certain sports, we need strength for certain sports, we might need high levels of flexibility for sports like gymnastics. And what we would typically do is maybe do some testing on them, we would grade how we're doing on them, um, and from that we'd be able to figure out what our strengths and weaknesses are. This could be done by the athlete themselves, this could be done by a coach or together. We might also look at our particular sport and look at how skillful we were in certain aspects. We might wonder what are the key skills required within this sport. You know, in gymnastics, there are certain skills. In tennis, there are different skills. In football, there are different skills. And we might then grade ourselves to um, determine, again, what our strengths and weaknesses are. Could be done by you, could be done your, by your coach as well. But what we're getting around to in performance profiling in this uh, applied psychology unit is looking at the psychological qualities or constructs. It kind of means the same thing. What are things, what psychological qualities are needed for a particular sport? We know we generally want optimal levels of motivation. We want persistence. When things get tough, we stick at it. We want effort. We want teamwork if it's a team sport. Um, so. The first thing we might do is address what things does our sport, my sport, or the sport in the case study, require me to have high levels of to perform well in terms of the psychological qualities. And in the same way as those other types of um, evaluation, we would evaluate these psychological constructs. We decide what the key qualities were, and then the coach and the athlete themselves might grade. They may be the similar grades, they may be different grades, but it opens up a conversation. So ultimately, um, performance profile in the context of sports psychology is assessing and evaluating your psychological constructs and psychological qualities to see where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and maybe then you can use that information to work, move forward and address some of your weaknesses and improve them. So these are quite different kinds of examples here. You can see that it's in, almost in a radar chart kind of format. But essentially you, you decide what you're going to judge yourself or the coach and you decide on what you're going to judge yourself on. And you do it here and then you have a grading system, typically one to ten. So that's kind of a very brief overview and introduction as to what performance profiling. But what we need to do is look at the uh, detailed process of how this is done and the benefits of this. So when I teach the intervention sections, what I like to do is to use the sort of basic five questions or, or terms, what, when, how, why, however. And so you can see on the bottom of my slides there, I've got a reference to which one I'm talking about. So what is performance profiling is the starting point. It's a technique used to evaluate strengths and weaknesses. And I've shown you already some examples of those things, often on a rating scale, sometimes diagrammatic. Um, but that's essentially what it is. When can it be used? Well, it naturally could be used at the start of a meso cycle, a period of a couple of months maybe of training, whether it's the start of pre-season and you're going to you're going to evaluate where your team or your athletes are currently and then you're going to do something to move their psychological skills and qualities forward so that by the time they're at the competitive season they're performing, you know, better mentally. Um it might be something that's done between a coach or a personal trainer following some loss of performance if things aren't going so well. But ultimately, it really enables an evaluation to take place so that you can work together with the athletes to move them forward. This um, intervention absolutely goes hand in hand with goal setting. This is the starting part. We identify what we need to work on and then the goals are set to move them forward and we can check if things have improved later. 
So the, ne the key thing and that the sort of, I guess, detail to this comes from how is it done? How do um, sports psychologists work with athletes um, to administer performance profiling? And I like to explain it in two phases. Phase one is you've got to get your athlete to buy into it. You can't just impose it upon them. So what I would suggest is you learn that there's two phases to performance profiling. First of all, introducing what it is to the athletes. And in, and in doing that, what you need to do is sit down with them and explain what the aim of this is. The aim is to, you know, find out your strengths and recognize how good you are at certain things, but also to figure out the bits you need to work on psychologically. Then what you need to do is explain them and talk, explain to them and talk them through the process of what is involved in this. They need to understand what's going to be required of them, what they need to do within this process. Um, you need to sort of clarify to them, if we do this process together, there are benefits to you and, and highlight to them what the benefits are. Obviously, if they can see an outcome and if they can see how the, re the results of this process can apply to them, then there's a huge chance they're going to engage with it and they'll be, you know, working with you through the process. So this is phase one, ex basically explaining everything, explain the aim, process, benefits, results. And, and I think if you remember even that, explain the aim, uh, process, benefits, results, that's a great way to remember them. Four things you need to explain. So hopefully at this point then your athletes bought into this process and this is now where you actually start doing performance profiling. So phase two is the five stage process of performance profiling. Learn it as that five stage process. The first thing you need to do with sitting down with your athlete or team is elicit the psychological constructs or qualities that you think are most important within their performance and their sport. What elicit means is draw out with them, discuss and agree on what you think it is that you need to focus on. Is it confidence? Is it motivation? Is it, you know, assertiveness? Is it leadership? So decide on the main psychological constructs. Try to use this language, the, this red language here. Learn this particular language. Um, there's some suggestion that maybe you learn 10. Other I've seen elsewhere 20. I think 20 is quite a lot. But, you know, between 10 and 20 psychological constructs that you agree are really important for you to be able to perform well psychologically in your sport. That's number one in the five stage process. Then you've got to do the assessment bit. Now, you're the, you as the professional or the coach or the personal trainer, whoever it is working with the athletes, is going to do the rating on them, but they're going to do it on themselves as well. So there's going to be two scores, their score and the professional score. Agree the rating scale, of course. You need to clarify as much as possible what, what it's out of. Generally, one to ten is fine. Ten is high, one is low, and then you obviously rate each other you could all uh, sorry not rate each other you both rate the athlete what you could also do is an aspirational score so get the athlete to to rate where they think they're at now but also to get them to give a number for where they'd like to be after that meso cycle what they're aiming for third stage is to then discuss the results so you've got two sets of scores minimum yours and theirs discuss the strengths and areas for improvement. Um, this is a really nice way to open up conversation between the athletes and the coach, discuss the scores, discuss any differences, try to come to some re agreement if they are different um, and see where you're each coming from. Once you've done that, hopefully you can then agree on what the athletes and all teams strengths are and you can give them some praise for that. But also you can then identify areas that need improvement and, and prioritize those. If there's some things they're particularly not great at, then it's really essential that you together can set goals to work on it. Stage four is agree the goals for psychological skills training. So we've, we've gone strengths and weaknesses. These are the things we need to work on. Right. Let's set some realistic, smart goals. Um, to move us forward from this point. So, okay, your score was three out of 10. We know we want to be up on a seven or an eight. What are the goals going to be to get us there? How can we take these bite side steps to improve your psychology in this particular um, aspect? And so you would agree the goals and you would set a program with which you can work 
through over weeks and weeks to achieve those goals. Final stage in this, of course, is we want to know if you've made progress, if you've got better. So at an agreed time later, you would repeat this process and monitor how they're doing. Did they achieve those goals? What are their current, what are their scores now? Do we need to adjust the goals? Were they too high, too low, too, you know, too easy? How can we move them forward again? So it is an ongoing cycle, an ongoing process. So basically two phases. The first phase is introduce, explain the aim, process, benefits, results. Second phase is the five stage process. Elicit the constructs. What do you want? What do you want to look at? What do you want to judge? Judge them. Give a rating one to ten. You and them. Discuss what you got, what you gave. What are their strengths? What things do they need to work on and prioritize those? What goals, therefore, are you going to set to move them forward for those areas to improve and agree a time later when they would repeat this process and check out the improvements they've made? Very quickly, you can pause the video and have a quick look at this. This is an example um, of a triathlete's performance profiling. You can see they've got the other aspects. It's OK to reference that. But remember, we're in a psychology unit, so you must incorporate psychological qualities and skills. And these are the ones that were identified as being relevant to a, a triathlete. Here we've got an example of the, the athlete's performance profile where they rate themselves in those things. And of course, some aspirational things here. You can see there's more dots where they want to be. There's quite a difference between this one and this one. Similarly, a quick example of a climber. So again, different psychological qualities and skills that are perceived as being key to success in climbing. So hopefully it's been quite apparent, you know, the why. You know, remember I'm using these questions, what, when, how, why, however. The why this would be done with athletes, with a team, is to evaluate their psychological um, skills or qualities and identify areas that need improvement and create a psychological skills training program to work on those things, identifying those those prioritised aspects to work to, to develop. But also, actually, it, as I said earlier, it does enable coach, athlete, psychologist and athlete, personal trainer and athlete or team to talk about their psychology. So it can really build a relationship between them and enhance uh, communication. It can make the athlete more aware of perhaps where they're going astray in terms of their mental approach and have better reflection on, on what they need to do to manage themselves and try to avoid problems through their psychology. Because you can be a brilliant performer, but your psychology may be limiting you and in inhibiting you. So again, I'm not going to go through every single one, but do pause the video and have a look at these reasons why performance profiling is beneficial. It addresses psychology and we know psychology is, is absolutely essential to performance for health or sport reasons. Um, it gives the athlete some control. So it's really important that athletes feel they've got some choice and control and autonomy in what their training is and what they're working on so that levels of self-determination are high, they determine with the coach what they're going to work on. It enhances awareness, it prioritises goal setting, which we know is really important. It, it's mon you can monitor progress through it and ultimately it boosts confidence and boosts motivation and boosts focus. So it's absolutely beneficial to lots of aspects of sports psychology. But then we need to just consider the however. Um, I think showing your ability to be a bit analytical and a bit critical of strategies can be really um, great in an exam. So not you don't just want to say how brilliant this is, but if you can chuck in your written work, maybe something to be cautious of or one reason why coaches and athletes might need to be careful with this as a strategy, then that can be beneficial. Probably the biggest one is this is all generally very subjective. The coach gives their own opinion as to what level the athlete is on each of those criteria. I think you're a seven out of 10 on motivation. But similarly, the athletes, very subjective. They give their own opinion on where they think, well, I think I'm a nine out of 10. So it isn't measured with any reliability, it isn't measured in a formal way. It is people's opinion ultimately. And the danger of this is it brings bias. It could be that your athlete is overscoring themselves, or it could be that they're underscoring themselves because they're lacking confidence. Um, 
it's still obviously worth doing, but it's something to be mindful of and to consider. And I suppose the ideal is it builds communication and relationship between the athlete and the coach. Up to the, yeah, but it could also create conflict if the scores are dramatically different or if neither are great at communicating or perhaps the athlete gets defensive if the coaches mark them down on something you can imagine that this might cause problems so overall it's a really essential important intervention that can be used with athletes or teams um, many of the case studies are about an individual person but sometimes you might you might find you face a team one just to show you very quickly before I finish, um, you can use things that are, they're still subjective, but they're a little bit more structured than just a rating scale um, made up by the coach and you. And there are certain questionnaires or inventories that you can use to assess aspects of your psychology. Um, so this, this one is quite a generic one. No, sorry, I think this one's quite a generic one and gives you lots of different information. Um, so they could be used as well as just the one to ten type thing. So in summary, here's the brief description of what, when, how, why, however, and if hopefully this will help you and prompt you to remember the sort of information you need for this particular F2 performance profiling topic. Very last thing to show is an example of a case study where this um, intervention was relevant and beneficial. Um, Ricky was one of the years, one of the papers. Um, have a pause of the video. Obviously, if you haven't already, read the case study. I've put some annotations in there to prompt the sort of information that's relevant. Looking at the qualities, this was the issue and this is what he needed to do to improve, to work on it. And then here's a sample section which is on the performance profile aspect of this. So again, pause the video and have a look about this, the way in which you might um, convey this sort of information.